Welcome to this video. We are going to briefly recap what we know about adding vectors, and then we're going to see how to add two-dimensional vectors with each other. The first thing is, here's what we learned in the very beginning. Imagine a person walks to the east, some amount delta x, and then they walk to the north, some amount delta y. If we want to get the total displacement, we say, aha, connect an arrow from the very beginning to the very end. It's two-dimensional, so we will call that total displacement delta r total. And what does the equation show? The equation needs to show add this vector tip to tail with this vector, and you get delta r total. If we want to find the magnitude or the value of delta r alone, the actual numerical value, we don't use this equation. The top equation here shows how do we connect the vectors tip to tail. Here's the equation we use for the magnitude alone. It's the Pythagorean theorem. We've done even more complex scenarios. Imagine, and this is what we'll put here, imagine you go to the right some amount delta x1, and then you walk, not to the right, excuse me, you walk east, and then you have another eastward displacement, delta x2, followed by a northward displacement, delta y1, followed by another northward displacement, delta y2. If you want to find the total resultant, if you want to draw the total resultant displacement, you start at the very beginning and you go to the very end, like this. There's the total displacement. And we see it's two-dimensional, so we use an R. We know how to write an equation for all of these individual vectors. We look and we say, hey, we've just connected this one with this one tip to tail, this one and that one tip to tail, here again tip to tail. They're all just connected tip to tail. And when you add them up like that, you get delta r total. If the vectors had doubled back, let's say that delta x1 is to the right, you could have had delta x2 pointing to the left, and the equation would still be true. How do we get the magnitude of delta r total? Because, after all, this top equation only tells us how to connect the arrows. So here's how you find the magnitude of delta r total. It's the Pythagorean theorem again. The only catch, the only trick, is that you find delta x total by adding up these two, and you find delta y total by adding up these two. Here's the final scenario we're going to learn about in this video. What if you walk at an angle, some two-dimensional displacement, and then you walk at another angle, another two-dimensional displacement? We know how to connect these with the resultant. You start at the beginning and you end at the end. So here's the total 2D displacement. So the equation is simple. We connect these two tip to tail. We add them tip to tail. And that's how we get delta R total. But you can't use the Pythagorean theorem here like in the other cases. Because these vectors aren't at right angles to each other. They're not perpendicular. So how do we find this magnitude? That's what this video is about. So let's take a problem like this. A hiker walks 158 meters at 33 degrees south of east. That's two-dimensional. The hiker then travels 219 meters at 47 degrees north of east, another 2D vector. Finally, she travels 206 meters south. South is just along the y-axis. Hmm, we have to find the magnitude and also the direction of her total 2D displacement. So we have three things that happen. Let's draw those three things. First, the hiker walks at 33 degrees south of east. What does that direction look like? I put a dot to represent the tail of my vector. And I'm measuring, hmm, from east. So I draw east. Do I go north of east or south of east? I go south of east, so I need to go down south, 33 degrees. And that two-dimensional vector, this first two-dimensional vector, points along that direction. What about the next one? I put a dot for the tail of the vector, 
and we are going, let's see, north of east, so east is my reference. So I draw east. Instead of going down, I'm going up, or more specifically, north by 47 degrees, which is a bigger angle. So this next vector, this second vector that I'm given, must be drawn like that along this 47 degree angle. The final thing I need to do is draw this southward displacement. So again, I put a dot. That's where my tail of the vector will be. And then I draw the vector straight south. I've shown so far the directions. Now I will add in the magnitudes, 158 meters, 219 meters, 206 meters. But when I add in the magnitudes, I am going to label these vectors. This is my first displacement, so that'll have a subscript 1. This will have a subscript 2 because it's the second displacement. And guess what this one will be? 3. So I call this one delta R1, and I use an R because that first displacement is two-dimensional. I call this one delta R2. I use an R because it's two-dimensional. It has an angle. And I use a 2 because it's the second displacement that I was given. For this one, I use delta Y3. I use a Y because it's vertical. I use a 3 because it's the third displacement. 1, 2, 3. The third displacement that's given. We need to add these three displacements together, and the question is, how? How do we add them? Before we answer that question, let's take this away. If we think about vectors, we know how to add vectors. We draw them tip to tail. So you do the first, and that tip there connects to the tail of the next, right here, this tail. So let's add that in. And then you connect to this tip, the tail of the next and you connect the vectors like that, tip to tail. The resultant or total displacement starts at the very beginning, and it ends at the very end. So it looks like this. So we're getting close. This total displacement is two-dimensional, and it has an x component, and it has a y component. The purple we call delta r total, but we have names for the green and the blue as well. The green is the delta x total, the blue is delta y total. We already know how to find delta x total. Watch this. These three vectors have components as well. These do. The first has an x component and a y component, and because this is our first displacement, call these delta x1 and delta y1. This second displacement has a second x component and a second y component. And this third displacement, we said, is already just a y component. It doesn't have any x part to it or x component to it. So what's the relationship between these green arrows? We already know the answer to that question. The total is equal to 1 plus 2. Here's the equation. If delta x points, if delta x1 points to the right, we make it positive here. If delta x1 were to point left, we would make it negative. The same is true for delta x2. When we add it, we make it positive or negative based on which way it points. What about the vertical arrows? How are those related? It's the same equation. The total is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3. And as with delta x total, right, these can be positive or negative. Delta y1 points down, so we would make it negative. Delta y2 points up, so we would make it positive. And delta y3 points down, so we would make it negative. This is how we will find delta x total, and this is how we will find delta y total. We will get the components, we will add them together. And once we know those values of delta x total and delta y total, we can use our old friend Pythagorean theorem. Delta r total, the magnitude of this 2D displacement, the magnitude which we were asked to find, is calculated from this equation. The direction 
which I haven't shown, but theta is right here. The direction is gotten from this equation. So now that we know how to proceed, let's solve this problem. First, we look at the first displacement, and we draw it. Then, we draw the x component and the y component. We move to the next displacement, and we draw that one. We add in the x component and the y component. Finally, we draw the last displacement, which is just to the south. There is no x component, so we leave it like it's shown. If you want, you can think about these three purple vectors. Uh, whoops, you can think about delta r1, delta r2, and delta y3. You can think about adding them tip to tail like this and drawing the total displacement like that. Uh, and if you want, you can think about the total displacement with its x and y components. And there's theta. But you don't need to think about any of this. In fact, I'm not going to think about any of that just yet. Instead, I do this. Delta x1, the x component, is hypotenuse cosine 33. Delta y1 is hypotenuse sine theta. Delta x2 is hypotenuse in purple, cosine theta. Cosine because delta x is, this is adjacent the angle. And delta y2 is opposite the angle, so it is equal to hypotenuse sine 47 degrees. This doesn't have any components except for just the y component shown. There is no x component, and so we're done. We don't need to break this into components. Now we are ready to solve. We add up all of the delta x's, delta x1, delta x2. The first is this, and that points to the right, so we make it positive. The second is this, and that's also rightward. The arrow goes right, so we make it positive too. And this is about 280 meters. We do the same thing for delta y total. We have three vertical arrows to add. There's this first bit, 158 sine 33, and that arrow points down, so it's negative. Then we have 219 sine 47. That arrow points up, so it's positive. And lastly, we have 206, which points down. The arrow is pointing down, so we make that negative. We add this up in the calculator, and you get about negative 130 meters. We are now ready to draw our final delta r total right triangle. First, we draw delta x total. It's rightward, or eastward, 280 meters. We connect, tip to tail, the negative 130 for y total, delta y total. So there's 280. Delta y total is down because it's negative by about 130 meters. The last thing we can do is draw delta r total, which starts at the beginning, ends at the end, and draw in theta. The way we get delta r total and theta is using our right triangle rules. We have Pythagorean theorem available to us to get this. We have inverse tangent to get that. So delta r total is equal to given by this formula. You plug in for delta x total, you plug in the unrounded value, 281.86, blah, blah, blah. For delta y total, you plug in this unrounded value. It looks like that. And you calculate to get about 310. For theta, we use the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. This is opposite theta. You plug in the values, and what do you get? 25 degrees. And when we look at this final right triangle that we drew, we see it is south from east, or south of east. So that's how you solve these problems. The final answer, the magnitude and direction of total displacement, is this number here in combination with this angle. And this is just about the most difficult math. There's no more math that we do all year harder than this problem. So give yourself a pat on the back.